Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Brian and Dylan Take on the World. This is a bonus episode dropping on Friday. We talk a little bit about the Oscars. We kind of face the music so far as our terrible picks goes. And then I have an awesome interview with two of the guys from Level Up Lore, a podcast that's really amazing combining campfire stories with video games lore. You're not going to want to miss it. Thank you so much for checking it out and on with the show. Welcome, welcome back to episode three. Brian, we're going to call this episode three. Episode three of Brian and Dylan Take on the World. It's a special episode today. Yeah, it's, as, like, it's like two and a half, three, whatever we want to go with. I'm going to I'm gonna call this episode 2.8. Okay. It's almost like it's almost like those Kingdom Hearts games where it's like two point something. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to be changing up the format today. Uh, we're going to quickly talk about the Oscars. As the Oscars happened last Sunday, uh, I hope that you listened to our Oscars preview because it was rather not accurate to what actually happened. Yeah, this is kind of us like facing the music. Like we don't want to be wrong and then like pretend it didn't happen. We want to be straight up with you guys. I am not as smart as I think I am, but I also think that the Oscars may have got some things wrong. But we'll uh, here we go. We'll 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 get into that. Yeah, we're not wrong. uh, You're wrong, Academy. Yes. And then after we talk about that, Brian did a interview with Level Up Lore that we will be presenting to you today. So it's still yeah. a uh, fun episode, even though we're breaking from the norm. Yep. I had a great time talking with them. I'm super excited to, one, have you all hear that interview and two, to work with them again in the future. But without further ado, I say we get into these Oscars, Dylan. Let's do it. So, Shape of Water obviously won Best Picture. Yes. We you made a deal with ourselves that we will be reviewing whatever movie won Best Picture. Sadly, oh, it is we did it. Shape of Water. Hey, it could have been words. It could have been Phantom Thread, right? Oh, God. <laughs> Yo, Shape of Water won. I'm not totally shocked. Uh, I, I, I was rooting for Dunkirk. Mm-hmm. Some things have happened since we last recorded that I was no longer rooting for Dunkirk. Okay. Before the Oscars came back, up, I, the morning of the Oscars, I rewatched Get Out, yep. and I became completely sold that Get Out was the best movie of the year, definitely from what I saw. Mm-hmm. And that's why I didn't know you rewatched it because I ended up watching it um, Sunday during the day. Yes, that yeah, awesome. yeah, funny enough, I, yeah, I remember when you told me, that, yeah, I'm really really happy that Jordan Peele won Best mm-hmm. Original Screenplay. I think he deserved it. I think it was very debatable that he deserved. Best director as well. I think that Guillermo del Toro did an awesome job with Shape of Water. Just Shape of Water didn't really move the needle for me. Right. But you know, I can't. I'm I'm not totally upset with what happened because people saw it coming. The build up to the Oscars was it was basically between Shape of Water and Three Billboards. I was like, I'm Ebbing, Missouri. I am happy that Three Billboards didn't win it because, like I said, I don't think Three Billboards is the. I don't think Billboards is even the top three movie on that list. Now mm-hmm. that I have. Also viewed, finally, I viewed Lady Bird the day before the Oscars. Yep. Maybe the most overrated movie of the year. <laughs> oh, man. Harsh. But, but we'll, we can get into that. But actually, yesterday, I finally watched Blade Runner 2049. And you that, that, to me, was debatable the best movie of the year that I saw. It's debatable with Get Out and Dunkirk. I'm kicking myself for not seeing it before so I could have been on the Blade Runner 2049 campaign like mm-hmm. a majority of the Reddit and Facebook comment sections were. Yeah, it's funny. I have never been so off like the needle in terms of how a movie was going to do. I was super pumped for this film. I went and saw it opening weekend and I was like, yeah, that was great. I bet a lot of people saw this, but they didn't. <laughs> so I was one of the, I was one of the people with the original Blade Runner that I was kind of in between, but mm. there was also I originally saw I did not see the final cut as the first time I saw it, mm. and then I finally saw the final cut and I liked it a little bit more. But I was I, I I was on the sad train that I thought the first Blade Runner was a little boring, mm-hmm. uh, a little long and a little boring. I eventually got around to to liking it a lot, but Blade Runner twenty forty nine I. I blew me away mm. uh, it's a beautiful film to look at i'm very very happy that their cinema photographer won 
Um, and he's actually been nominated. I'm going to pull pull him up right now. Mm. He's been nominated for a shitload of films, and I have no idea how he didn't win for any of these films before. I know, uh, his, right? His he's name, so talented. His name is Roger Deakins, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. And I'm going to I'm actually just going to pull up things that he was nominated for. So he's been nominated for an Oscar 14 times for mm. cinematography. He was nominated for obviously Blade Runner 2049, which he won. Sicario, Unbroken, Prisoners, Skyfall, True Grit, The Reader, which I did not see, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, which is a underrated movie, if you ask yes, me. and a great title, I feel like. Yes. Underrated it's, title. It's, it's so it's good. A mouth, it's a mouthful, but also is Brian and Dylan take on the world, but yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah, we, we relate to it. We, we are now, if you search Brian and Dylan, uh, Brian and on iTunes, we are now the third podcast that comes up. So right, we're we gotta, honest. We're coming we're, for we're, them. We're on pace for for stardom. All these other Brian's they're nothing. <laughs> they're nothing. No Country for Old Men. The man who wasn't there. Oh brother, where art thou? Cundum, which Cundun, which I never even heard of. I don't know that one. Fargo right. and the Shawshank Redemption, which was his first nomination. That is a shitload of very good movies. Yeah. He only won, I believe this was his first yeah, this was his first win. Uh, for some reason, I thought he won. He might have won one more. This is his very first win. I uh, would be nominated fourteen times. Yeah, Un- which is insane. Unreal. But this movie was honestly maybe the most beautiful movie I have ever seen, mm-hmm. in terms of just sight, uh, sight and sound. I thought the I thought the score and the music was really really good. You had the Blade Runner from the '80s score, which was like that, uh, like that futuristic. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a futuristic noir depressing type just beep that's the only way I think I could describe it uh, it's the score is just so trippy mm. uh, it's it's it, it's it was just so good and I thought the story the story was really good too very confusing for me at first but I'm also not a very smart person and eventually when I started getting into it I looked a little, I looked some up to kind of catch me up because I was too stupid to follow along it's a very good movie yes. it's a little long but it didn't feel too long mm. so Long story short, I think Blade Runner was snubbed because it wasn't even nominated for Best Director for Denny. How do how do we say it again? Villeneuve. 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 He wasn't nominated for Best Director. It was it won cinematography and actually it won special effects too, which it deserved. Yeah. But uh, no Best Picture, which surprised me. And I I think there was a few you could have removed from that. And I am now on board with saying that I do not think Lady Bird should have been nominated for Best Picture. I thought it was a good movie, not a great movie, mm-hmm. but it kind of feels like that this was the year for good, not great movies. And I think the two great movies that came out this year, the three great movies that came out this year were snubbed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Get Out didn't win. Dunkirk didn't win. But now in my review, I think that Dunkirk has some flaws, but Get Out, I think was probably the best movie of the year. I I don't know if I can put Blade Blade Runner in front of it, Mm -hmm. but Get Out was very, very good. Yeah. Like I said, I get to see it this weekend and, the last half an hour of that movie is so intense. And it's the perfect mixture between like social horror and like comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the 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 TSA agent front of that yeah. is hilarious. Very funny. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see him in more things. Mm-hmm. But you know, the, the, the best picture was the thing that kind of that kind of irked me the most. And then now after seeing Blade Runner twenty forty nine, I was surprised it wasn't nominated. Uh, but prior to to seeing it, I was I kind of thought that maybe it was just a fanboy type thing. I'm sure it was a very very nice movie uh, visually because that was the thing a lot of people were saying. But the mm-hmm. story itself, the actual movie, was just good. I mean, you can't go, also can't go wrong with Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling. Oh, either. I know. So they're both so strong in this movie. So, Shape of Water. It's it won Best Director. I believe it won Best Score as well, which actually surprised me. I mean, I'm going to double check on that too. But I believe it won Best Score as well. I I don't know. I, I really I, I don't think Shape of Water was was that great of a movie. Like I said, I'm not shocked it won because the build up going into it was that Blade mm. that Shape of Water was likely the front runner. Right. Original score was won by Shape of Water. You are correct. Yeah, it won four total Oscars: Best Achievement in Directing, Best Movie, uh, Best in, Best Music, and Best Production Design. Mm. So. Guillermo del Toro is a very good actor. Pan's Labyrinth is a very good movie. But, yeah, no, it, it was – overall, this whole Oscars didn't really do much for me. It was nothing as crazy as last year. I thought the movies last year were significantly better. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, there's nothing, nothing insane like the wrong thing being read happened this year. There was, you know, political statements which you had assumed were going to happen anyway. I thought Meryl Streep's speech was awesome. Mm-hmm. That whole thing with having every woman that was nominated to stand up, and I think she eventually did every woman, period, because then it was kind of derogatory to the women that weren't nominated. But still, <laughs> it was an awesome speech. I also thought, I, I, funny enough, I thought the guy that won Best Cinematographer, Blade Runner, had like the second best speech. He was, uh, he was just, he seemed like just a normal dude, mm. and he also seemed like he was just high off his ass. So that was awesome. <laughs> He was, he was funny, like, listen, like, I've been to like twenty of these. I never win. I'm just gonna get high. I, I think like, he oh, like shit. He, he like he like started to congratulate his wife, and he was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> but uh, overall, the Oscars it was the Oscars were very you know just bland this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Jimmy Kimmel a lot. I didn't think there was anything too great. I thought that whole thing about them going to the movie theater was really tacky. Right. So you know that was that was the Oscars. I really hope we have a better Oscars next year. Yeah, so was, I guess let's just run down the winners real quick, just like major categories. Sam Rockwell. I don't think we picked Sam Rockwell. No, no, no. no. Sam Rockwell <laughs> was the front runner. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was my pick because huh? okay. he 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 crushed it in free billboard. So that was actually the least surprising win of the uh, of the night for me. Gotcha. And then oh, this is an order that's annoying. Okay, uh, Alice and Janney for I Tanya. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's uh, which, a great actress. Not to cut you off, I did think that the mom in three in Lady Bird was very very good. Yes, and was. I thought that she was. Uh, I thought she was better than Alice and Janney and I Tanya. I think that once one, it's almost like Inception. Once it was in their head that she was the best. She like she won the Golden Globe and that she was the best person. I I I don't <laughs> think that the minds were changed at that point. I especially think with things like uh, best supporting actor that. Once the minds are made up, they're not changed because it's right. not – it's a major award, but it's not anything like Best Picture or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel it's like kind of hard because, like, sometimes people will win Golden Globes and not even be nominated at the Oscars, mm-hmm. like James Franco this year, for instance. Yeah. It's – and I also feel like every year that this, the movie that wins the Golden Globes for Best best Movie never, ever wins the Best Picture for, at the Oscars. Right. I feel like that happens every year. <laughs> uh, no, but sorry. Continue going down the list. All right. Um, but yeah, I just want to say she has what like seven Emmys and now an Oscar. Just yep. crazy. Yep. What a t- what a talented lady. All right. So original screenplay Jordan Peele. We touched on that. Um, big shout out to Jordan Peele. Amazing script. Just super, super great for him. And just like really adds like a lot of legitimacy to uh, Key and Peele. You know what I mean? Did you see that picture of of Key Keegan? My, when, yep. Yes. I, yes. Oh, when yes he I was did. him and randomly Colin Hanks mm-hmm. just like jumping for joy uh, when he won. That was that was my favorite picture. Yeah. I, I want to I want to frame that on my wall. That is that is true friendship right there. Just being that hyped up for your boy. That was awesome. awesome. He's also he's also probably like, hey, now put me in. Yeah. One of your <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. He's like, hey, can I get the uh, hookup on a roll, maybe? <laughs> Um, so best directing, we covered that actor in a lead role, Gary Oldman for darkest hour. Uh, not a big yeah. surprise. No, not at all. Well, I, I was hoping for Daniel Bas- Kaluuya, but it is. What it, it was, ba- I was probably basically between, uh, Gary Oldman and Daniel day Lewis mm. for phantom thread, which I've expressed how I could care less about that movie. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I don't think we're clear enough. We, we, we don't want to watch that film. Yeah, no, but it, it's. It, I'm glad Gary Oldman won. He did a very, very good job in Darkest Hour. Even though I didn't think it was, I didn't. That was an. Uh, the, it's just the theme of these Oscars. It's just another movie that really wasn't all that to me. Mm. But uh, his performance was very, very good. So I'm, I'm glad he won. And then uh, Francis McDormand for Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, mm. I really thought Sorcy Ronan was going to win this. Um, I was wrong. I. I thought she was. I thought she was good in Lady Bird. I didn't think that she was as good as Frances McDormand. Yeah. I, I I was I was rooting for her because she's an Irish girl, and I like I said, Frances McDormand's character was not that likable, but mm. not surprised at all. And I'm glad she won because her speech was awesome. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> move, move <on. laughs> um, and then yeah, just the best picture was the final one announced, and Shape of Water won, and we will be watching it and giving it a full spoiler review soon. I'm gonna say maybe our next episode next week, mm-hmm. not not episode five, but maybe maybe episode six. Yeah, that definitely gives us enough time to watch it, 
kind of collect our thoughts. Um, it's funny because this is going to sound terrible, but I'm just going to say it. When I saw the trailer for Shape of Water, I was like, wow, that looks so dumb. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's now being deemed Grinding Nemo as well. Oh, over Twitter. no. <laughs> so, now, I can't get that out of my head whenever I hear Shape of Water. Oh, I just think God, Grinding Nemo. No. Okay. <laughs> I like the I was a picture of like people like hugging fish and stuff and then people putting the uh shape of water two thousand seventeen under it. I saw a joke. I saw a joke that said men in Hollywood have pissed women off so much that now they've resorted to sleeping with fish. Oh. So yeah, I had like no expectations for this movie to be good. So it was why I didn't see it. And now it one's the best picture show, now I'm like Oh, maybe my expectations should be high, so they kind of like average out to just being like, eh, all right, let's see, let's see what this has. It's not, it's not a bad movie. It, I, I would even probably put it in like the good category, the good movie category. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, it's, it, it was just, it's a, it's a Guillermo del Toro movie where you expect like weirdness. Yeah. But I just, uh, over Michael Shannon killed it, but he does good in everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I don't know, I don't know. It, I'm so. Uh, I thought I was gonna have a lot to say about the Oscars, but now I'm just really realizing how just just bland just everything was this year. The movies, the nominations, just everything. Yeah, maybe one year we'll actually like get an Oscars where we feel like, oh yeah, this is good. I'm glad all these people won. Well, now now for for next year we'll have the entire time to be able to see every movie that's going to be nominated. So when we do this again next year, we would have seen every movie and we'll have an opinion on it. Oh yeah. That'll definitely be for next year for this podcast. Like we can't, now that we have a podcast going, we have to like watch all of them. And by that point, when you search Brian and on iTunes, Mm -hmm. we will now be number two. At least, at least two. Let's get it. All right. So that was the Oscars. Um, We are going to go into the interview with the Level Up More podcast, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll be right back. Love you guys. See ya. Thank you guys so much for sitting down with me. This is really exciting. I love the podcast. I think it's incredibly unique and a great idea what you guys are doing. First off, I guess, where did this start? Who came up with the idea of let's do a podcast and then how did it become like a video game centric fairy tale type thing? Turge, I'm going to go and uh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is your call. All right. So here I am, bright eyed, bush, DC. Um, I've been more and more the last few years. I've been listening a lot to to podcasts. It's just been becoming a, a growing media. Mm. Um, but inherently, myself going to school with Austin, Dan, Jaime, really the the entire team, Zach included, we were all kind of our own little nerd community. And I always kind of found myself, you know, a nine to five, day in day out, listening to what I would consider like lore videos, all right. mostly hosted on YouTube talking about like my name is by Thor um, out of like doing destiny content and I really feel like this, this gap there's a lot of great great narrative stories being told mm-hmm. through pod and both some of the best stories that I've ever heard um, both as just a listener and a gamer is typically in video games you know you're talking right. about such a dynamic story <clears throat> where people are really invested in these games because they're built up on a foundation of storytelling and so we started to explore, like, where where can I find where can I find video game more? Where mm-hmm. can I find stories on a podcast? And sure enough, after a little bit of market research, it was just it's not a thing. You know, no, there's, there was not. no one narrative story kind of being told across all of these different video game universes. And mm-hmm. so I reached out to Jaime, Austin, um, both people that I worked with in different capacities before, and essentially pitched the idea, like, hey, I think this is a real opportunity. And the best part is, is like, you know, we have an opportunity to bring true value to this, not just to read a script out loud, but to really build and develop our own original content, telling a story from a different perspective. And then, of course, the real value is like there's a story behind that story. And that's the historical context. Mm-hmm. That's the inspiration for the story of the video game itself. And so we really wanted to be able to kind of tie everything together. 
into what we essentially developed into level up lore and just we've taken an agile approach to it so it's something that we wanted to be really really iterative with we knew it was going to require a lot of learning mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of a very evolutionary process so we just kind of took in stride bringing on a couple bringing on a couple of different other team members as we kept on going and it's really developed into something that again we've we've really hit the ground running and we continue to improve our process god that first that first episode was a that was an experience um uh for for me you know i've always loved video games and just nerd stuff in general so when turton pitched this idea first of all I, I was like really flattered and honored that he approached me um and i was like all right yeah sure i'm i'm absolutely on board and then um i found myself i started working for a couple of startups in the video game industry um called uh, Atomic Hype, which is centered around cosplay marketing, and then Shout Around, which is an app for conventions. So all of a sudden, you know, this other opportunity came, and I'm like, oh, this actually fits in with what I want to be doing. Uh, you know, it fits my cosplay photography as well as my gamer lifestyle blog and, like, the stuff that actually pays me. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And then something that really stood out to me was in our very first couple of discussions, um, Turgeon started, you know, sending us these uh, PowerPoint slides uh, that were focused on group organization and sort of our objectives and like like outlining goals and plans. Mm -hmm. And there was a really big refinement process of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, within those first few meetings, I was like, oh, you know, this is not just a couple of kids uh, getting together to just like see what we can make this right. is a plan there's a goal and and i think you'll hear a lot of people uh say that oh you know you just sort of need to have creativity and fun stuff come naturally to you you know you can't you can't meddle with that sort of that dynamic mm -hmm. and while i think that's true to an extent um doing your due diligence doing your research doing your planning uh i think is really starting to set people apart and so for me that was a sign that it was like fuck, I want to commit to this, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah. And I think, honestly, that that early stages in planning has served us really well because this still is not our nine to five, the one thing we're right. focusing on. So, you know, we really need to be flexible mm -hmm. and uh, accommodating with this. Right. I think what I really think is cool and kind of like all of us are kind of doing is we all have a full-time gig. We all have a grind, but today's internet today's like cheaper f microphones cameras and stuff they kind of allow us to show a creative side and it's awesome because you know if it were in the past when this wasn't as readily available for consumers like we wouldn't be able to make this stuff and i think that'd be a shame because i like i said i really do think your podcast is awesome and uh, i'll do whatever i can to help get the word out <laughs> thank happy. you thank you <laughs> means a lot to us so i guess um how what's the process of going like by each episode picking the video game you're gonna cover and then scripting recording editing all that stuff kind of take me through like uh how it's made before your podcast sure I guess I'd love to take the initial steps, Jaime, if you want to get into more of the creative process. Cause that's yeah, around. yeah, that's, yeah, it's, um, God, I don't want to say it's, it's not really compartmentalized. I think that's the wrong word for how we approach things. But I think it's just like, depending on what stage we're at, people will take point, mm -hmm. just sort of naturally, just sort of organically. Uh, so... I mean, how we decide on a game, usually just like um, before the end of the month, we decide on what game mm -hmm. we're going to do, right? And that that gets resolved pretty quickly, actually. Uh, going into it, I thought that would always be sort of a point of contention or, you know, right. would take a lot of time to figure out what we do. But now we've, we've agreed pretty quickly on what games to do. Mm -hmm. And then so when it comes to script writing, we do a brief research phase where all of us just sort of compile... Um, data information. Uh, if one of us has played the game and the rest have not, you know, we have notes from that. If any of us have books from the game, uh, we put those notes down. Uh, our Reddit guy, Zach, usually just trolls the Reddit, puts down great subreddits for us to find. Right. Um, and, you know, Wikipedia pages and stuff like that. And then I usually take point on the script. Um, I studied film in college, so, you know, 
uh, there, there was a script writing class, and that's proven surprisingly, uh, <laughs> surprisingly in my life, but not surprisingly for this, invaluable. Right. Um, you know, the ability to just put out plot points mm. and write up a script. Um, and while that's occurring, usually, uh, I guess Alex will talk more about this later, but, you know, Turgeon, Dan, and, uh, Turgeon and Dan will work on the sort of like historical connection between the game's themes and real world inspiration, uh, you know, what devs could have looked to um, for creative design or common themes in this game and then literature, stuff like that, but also reach out to partners for, you know, fun businessy stuff. And then, so I guess we sort of like work on two parallel sort of like routes, but we just check in with each other and make sure that we're not stepping on each other's toes. Um, probably the most fun part for me is getting all the voice actors mm -hmm. uh, together. Recently, we've started reaching out to guest voice actors, um, you know, people who are just passionate and nerdy and, and want to try something new. Most of them tend to be cosplayers or streamers yeah. from around America, uh, North America, I should say. And... Um, that's a fun read through process. Give it a couple takes, refine it down. Mm -hmm. And then um, I usually produce a rough edit and then hand that off to our sound engineer who works her magic. That's Jordan. Jordan. And uh, yeah, she's, she, she takes my, <laughs> she takes my crappy rough draft and turns it into just magic. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could definitely then, relate to that with uh, my editor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Another cool part is sort of when, you know, I mentioned there's those two parallel paths between what I'm doing and then what Turgeon and Dan are doing. When mm. that intersects, which is with the lore section, uh, I'm sorry, with the connection section in every episode of the podcast, um, that's always fun to do because uh, I I tend to, I mean, every, everyone kind of knows this, but like I tend to sort of like assert a little bit more of my creative input there because usually I'll have like a different perspective mm -hmm. from say Dan or Turgeon. And so, you know, I don't erase their work necessarily, but I'll just put in a couple of other, or you can look at it like this. And so that's always fun right. to me because it's like, well, look at this game, look at how we have three different ver like sort of opinions on it mm -hmm. and, and ways you can. Um, and I think in a lot of other podcasts or channels, that could be disruptive, mm -hmm. but I think in this it really adds a lot more richness to it, just right. because that's the whole point of this connection. You know, you want to see how ways you can look at it. Absolutely. Uh, so, what are your opinions on that? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Jaime has nailed it. I think to synthesize everything into like kind of what we develop into what is like what's our process? What what does it look like on you know the first of the month to the thirty first of the month? Mm -hmm. What do we get done? Again, it speaks to a little bit of what we would consider, I think what would fall under kind of like an agile project management, which mm -hmm. is the reins I've tried to take with it. It's because it's iterative and because we have every person, it's a small team, serves such a unique role that may not fit necessarily within creative. But for instance, myself in Austin go off and do a lot of the business development work. Dan and Zach go off and will work on all of our social media outreach getting more of the community contributors, especially when we're reaching out on Reddit. Um, Duffy, Austin, sorry, we're doing a lot of first name, last name. I know, I don't know what, like, I keep saying <laughs> Alex, but then that's not what you're being referred to, so. So whatever um, you want me to call you, just let me know. Uh, Alex is good, Alex okay. is good, but if you hear Turgeon, I may. That's, that's, that's yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, but to the, point, to the point that I guess that, to really refine this answer is like, it's it is our team we have weekly sync ups where we will go off we diverge and kind of all come back every week mm -hmm. bring, the, bring the table what we've all worked on separately whether that's myself working on the partnerships uh, more of the development itself looking more writing everything up i think it speaks to jaime's point where yeah we're all bringing especially in the lore section where it, it requires your due diligence on research you mm -hmm. really got to historical connection or else it's just like you're missing the mark man right and so you're still able to bring fresh perspectives into things which i think is really really yes but in terms of our runway it's like as jaime mentioned we're deciding on a, on a story something that we like that that fits
it's the calendar theme, so similar with the Halo mm. episode. Yeah. Mm. He kind of hit the notes on Valentine's Day, and right. so he used the calendar as inspiration. But that's also not limiting, because in a game like, for instance, we've explored Elder Scrolls going into mm. that. And we're hesitant, because we're like, oh, do we want to use up our... Do we want to use up Elder Scrolls like this early in our in our boat? And we're like, but at the end of the day, there's each world is filled with countless stories that you know we hope to be able to rotate and get to um, throughout every iteration. Mm -hmm. But we have a bit of a selection process which works. We all diverge, do what we need to do, develop all the marketing content. That's all on Austin front. He's been our graphic yeah. designer, mm -hmm. and we've got it set up now with a cap content calendar. It's like 15th of the month, we're running a discussion, we're blasting out our teaser. The following week, we're following up with another a reminder and usually noting like, hey, this is going to be our sponsor for this month. And then finally syncing everything up with the launch on the 31st. It's just one of those things where it's, you know, you get the, the interesting events coming up. Like Master, you just ran their game challenge last last night. Um, you got Paxis coming up. So it's like there's always something interesting or something else that we want to develop as a podcast two months ago it was getting business cards and we love them and it mm -hmm. gives us an extra of what we want to do right so it's been an interesting way to be able to stick to what we know and what we do every time to explore something different that we develop the podcast as a whole all right um how about inspirations what kind of podcasts or other media inspired you to take on this project I think the biggest one, uh, I remember in the early days, Turgeon uh, was just sending us links to a podcast called Lore. Right. I believe yep. they recently have a, a show on Amazon Prime mm -hmm. uh, now. So um, I don't know if that would, I don't know if you'd call that like the genesis of all this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, dude, like. I mean, it's interesting. What, what Aaron Mankey does as a writer is along with a couple other influences, it was just so influential in terms of being able to use research to tell a very driven narrative mm. podcast. It doesn't sound mm. like rattling off research. It sounds like he's he's telling folklore. Mm. And we're like, look, if this is what we want to do in a video game perspective, it's what we need to think of. Other inspiration was Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, where again, yeah. it's it's not, I mean, it's very much inspiration where it's just like, how do they use their research methods to form a cohesive narrative story that by the time, you know, an hour in, you're like, wow, um, I, I have an emotional connection with everything mm -hmm. that I've heard. Um, I'd say other inspiration is, is very typical of like, you know, there's so many people trying to make it out on YouTube today where yeah. it's, you know, it's a lot of lore and it's great. And I've had those days where I'm like, head down in a data excel sheet back <laughs> to, I got two like earphones and just listen to Star Wars. I'm like I don't know how else I would be able to like digest this as like listening to it on media because no one has it in a podcast form right and then I think the last the last piece of inspiration that really drove us into like developing the style that we have now is we looked at video game podcasts mm -hmm. um, that traditionally don't have a structured narrative format and we're like hey let's i mean that's why we stick to a script a lot of the times is uh, although the discussion allows us to exactly have that a discussion it's a lot of the times it's just a lot of people kind of babbling and yeah. no real structure or format to it and then at that point we're like what's the value that we're bringing we're three mm -hmm. joe schmoes talking about a video game and it's yeah, friends and family are going to listen, but after that, you can't grow it much further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that. Yeah. For me, actually, I, I actually didn't listen to really any podcasts prior to this. Um, occasionally, I'd really only tune into, like, um, Rooster Teeth's, mm -hmm. like, uh, Achievement Hunter uh, podcast. Um, you know, again, for me, the appeal, it, it was my sort of skill as a script writer as someone mm -hmm. you know who wanted to make movies but then was like screw that i don't hate myself that much um you know that but it was actually one of the early conversations we had so it was very shortly after alex was showing i think it was actually in one of the meetings where alex was showing us this at you know the agile breakdown mm -hmm. um duffy our, our graphics who kills the posters every week i'm always blown away by his work um he was the one who actually suggested, I, I believe, that we 
implement the sort of like first person perspective mm. like pretend we're someone in the game right. because i think in, initially and i was actually totally happy with this let's just have like a very sort of scripted discussion expo exploration mm. of lore right um so essentially it would just be it would be that connection section like just the connection section for like yeah. 30 40 minutes yeah. but then duffy was the one i think who suggested like what if we pretended we were an npc in that game mm. and i remember I'm never gonna forget Turgeon's face when he was like, "Whoa, that's the greatest thing ever!" <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, that, and then you know, so combining those two elements, that's what really fascinated me because I was like, "Oh, that's really interesting. How do we write that? How do we make those two sort of intertwine and coexist?" And I think it served us really well. Yeah, definitely. I it's actually really funny that you say Laura was an inspiration because listening to the end of the Halo podcast, I was like, man, this sounds exactly like lore. So you guys <laughs> you guys are like nailing it <laughs> as far as that goes. Hey, Amazon Prime, where's our show? Exactly. Hey, maybe one day, right? Yeah. Podcasts are getting shows. Why not yours next? <laughs> True. <laughs> I get, um, has there ever been an episode that you guys have like started working on, gotten pretty far in and then had to scrap entirely? Or an idea, a concept that you're like passionate about. And oh, passionate about, like there's I mean, not enough here. There's a reason why Halo came out a couple of days late. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it isn't just the fact of like, hey, this is a big game with mm -hmm. a lot of lore and a big connection component that like it, it it's so vast. It right. was very much. I mean, again, it, I think it's a commitment to us not just putting out quantity mm -hmm. it's like we, we're like hey it's worth sitting down rewriting this script yep. we yep. had to sit down on wednesday <laughs> where we're like yep. it's not it's not flowing the way we want yep. it's way too long and it's it you know it takes us a second to take a step back and to be like hey nothing bad is going to happen if we get this out in two days right. later and content or the quality of the content uh, substantially and yep. it was so we, but thankfully we stick to our guns in a way where it's like hey um you know once we pick a game we're we're digging into it and we're telling the story we we pick the story when we pick the game yeah i i think the lore section is has flip-flopped every now and then because as you find researchers like wait a minute this might be a stronger connection and at the end of the day you, you really just can't ramble so yeah yeah right two reworkings but Thank God, I've never had to redo anything. Yeah, yeah, we haven't we haven't had to like scrap anything and, yeah. and not use it. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll never get there. <laughs> yeah, as a team, one of those things where we do. I mean, we have an activity where we do a fist of five, and so when we're all posing these ideas, mm -hmm. you know, our rating system where we go through every idea and each team member votes. One to five, five being the highest, you you essentially attribute a point value to it, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so at the end of the day, the win, like the winner, so to say, is truly a consensus of who thinks is going to provide the highest value, or what yeah. do we think is gonna provide the highest value. Anything else is, goes in the parking lot, as we describe. It's something that we can get to at a later time, develop when we have a little more resources, like in terms of our own time and commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so mean, like we. Of, yeah, like we got plenty of ideas, you know, I'd say we're a pretty ambitious group of people. So, you know, we have plenty of plans for growth and, and expansion and just doing cool stuff. And so, you know, while we want to keep that in mind, we also don't want to, we also don't want that stuff to distract us from what we need to get done, like right. finish the damn script. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So how about uh, in terms of getting the word out? Because I'm right there with you starting a new project. You know, you're like, you don't want to badger your friends and family too much. But at that same point, they're like the only audience to start. What have you kind of been doing to get the word out for your podcast? Um, for one of the... I mean, you know, we usually use like all social media basis stuff, you know. So we have simple coordinated posts across all mm -hmm. accounts um but for me i think the most fun and interesting form of outreach has been um utilizing our voice actors because a lot of them are streamers cosplayers mm -hmm. um, or just friends with substantial in, uh, like followings and mm -hmm. programs you know 
seeing them share our work, uh, particularly Duffy's posters, has been really right. cool. Just because it's like, oh man, like I remember hanging out with you in Canada, and then all of a sudden, like you're sharing my friend's <laughs> poster for our, the podcast that I wrote. I'm like, that's freaking cool. Right. And um, based off of our our, our libs and stats, I, I think that it, there, there has been a little bit of a a uh, a spike in, mm. in, in listeners. I remember the coolest part for me was I was in uh, Holiday Matsuri in Orlando. I was walking around shooting a couple of cosplayers, and then I asked people what they were cosplaying, and they said, oh, we're um, from a, a podcast actually called Adventure Zone. And I was like, oh, hey, I actually have a podcast. It's about video games and stuff. He's like, oh, what's it called? I'm like, Level Up Lore. And they're like, oh, I listen to you. I follow you. And I was like, <laughs> so oh, crazy. my God, that's so cool. Um, so, so you know, it's been very fortuitous for me, at least, um, using the, the convention and cosplay scene. Mm -hmm. um, it's cool to see it be kind of, I guess, symbiotic to an extent. You know, a lot of these people I know, they're, they want to branch out into other ways of getting their name out there mm -hmm. and voice acting has always been an avenue for them but not right. necessarily voice acting for a podcast that's a right little bit more. Yeah, yeah yeah i think one big thing too and, and kind of taking the forefront yeah. with is trying to develop a community that you already know is there especially us <laughs> kind of all having some roots in worcester it's like you know i think of the the emerging kind of indie game community there i think of locations like and it's just places that we know, love, and have kind of grown with, it's like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's a lot of this is not only community driven, so where friends and family can only reach out so far, just being able to explore the communities that they might be a part of, we might be a part of, or even take for granted, um, was one thing that was really beneficial. And then at the end of the day, it's just, what we've noticed is there's a, there's a point in time, especially with trying to get more viewership and sponsors, right snowball of all of that yeah where it's just like a lot is on just having the content available so recognizing as a team like the patience that it requires and just to really trust the process like you put enough content out there you throw a few dollars in every now and then to do to cross with your organic traffic mm -hmm. on facebook on youtube on instagram wherever we're hosting really and then honestly just making a very um transparent and a wholehearted effort sincere so to say on you know your community pages both on twitter and reddit and reaching out and just trying to actually gauge like what is it that people want to hear mm -hmm. um people what we have and just at the end of the day just like hey you know the best thing that you guys can do for us is give us a listen and if you don't like it you don't have to listen again if you do tell a friend it's that's how it grows right all right, and I guess uh, I have like one more question. What's your dream video game to do a podcast about? Unless that's like too specific and you don't want to spoil any of your upcoming episodes, in which case we can. <laughs> well, I'll joke. I'll start with a quick joke where we were exploring stuff to do for Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and a part of me immediately jumped to the other scrolls. I wanted to do. Oh God. And one of those things where I think it's a little too deep for us this early in the game, but man, who's to say Valentine's Day 2019? You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day 2019, I, I'm pushing for Shikari and Mass Effect Garrison female Shepherd, but that's just me. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Elder Scrolls, so I'll hmm. leave it at that, but like a part of me also wants to, like, there's some deep, like, community lore that's been developed for, like, fun games, which. Hmm. No, who's to say we can't yeah. explore that? Yeah. Um, Fingers. <laughs> uh, Halo is my favorite game ever. So, so doing this episode already, like I poured my heart and soul into the yep. script, almost to the script's detriment, honestly. Um, so. <laughs> no, it was really good. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, games that I feel that I. So I don't really have a favorite game, but like I, I wanted to games to challenge us, honestly, as sort of mm -hmm. convoluted as that sounds. So just in general, a lot of like JRPGs I think would be great because those are so so story rich and driven, and because you know aside from like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, those are probably like the only JRPGs like we're familiar with. Yeah, and there's so many other games out there that like 
just because we're not familiar with a game doesn't mean that we feel like we shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. To me, that actually be is like is the signal is like oh we should do this game that seems fun because uh, you know how can we put a spin on it that maybe the fandom community doesn't interpret it now. Um, so whole the whole of it just sort of like Japanese game, but then also there are a couple more controversial games that I think we want to try and challenge ourselves in the future. So like um, Wolfenstein Two okay. has been a big that's that's like a goal for me to strive to be able yep. to do something like that, but. I don't think we're ready for something as big as that yet. And then yep. Far Cry 5, another one. I've been pushing for that, but as of recent events, I'm like, okay, maybe we need to rethink our approach to right, that. So, right. so games that sort of ride that line, you know, games that yep. really say something. Um, and then indie games. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be cool to really do an indie game that, especially like while they're growing, we're actually we've spoken to a couple of small developers about you know doing a story on their game and sort of using that during their launch um so yeah for me it's not spe it's not a specific game it's more about like the work process yep. for for a game so yeah all right and where can people find you connect to you maybe there's a voice actor listening to this who's like oh i this could be something cool for me where can they get in touch with you and find the podcast church <laughs> <laughs> level up lore every level up lore .com, um, yep. twitter instagram facebook <clears throat> And then uh, we're actually we're making more of a jump over to Discord, recognizing who our yeah. listener is, and I think that's going to be important. Um, a lot of our community conversations that happen as a follow up are also happening up on Reddit, on a few subreddits particularly. So you can be on the lookout. Everything you need to find is going to be on uh, leveluplore.com, and our email is leveluplore at gmail.com for anyone that's interested in participating, contributing, um, really adding anything else. Yeah. Cool. 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 So yeah, I guess I'll turn it over to you guys uh, if you have any questions for me. Excellent. Well, first and foremost, I want to know what game you would like to see us do next. Mm. All right. Well, let's see. Um, it was funny when you guys came out with the Bioshock episode. That's what got me interested. So that's like my favorite game. But uh, I think a good one you guys could look into is Horizon Zero Dawn. A lot of interesting oh, stuff yes. going on in that game. <laughs> Uh, probably my favorite game of this Damn. last year. So that'd be my wish list for you guys. Ooh, ooh, that hit me like an arrow. <laughs> oh man. I mean, hey, as a you know, as a Worcester to Worcester, watch you say, watch you see guy. I, <laughs> I don't know, like so, so wicked good everything. It screams Worcester, and I love it, and I want to know more about it. I give me the origin story. <laughs> Okay, so it started out, uh, my friend Samora and I, we uh, did sketch comedy for years all through high school, but when we kind of went away to college, we went to New York, I stayed in the area of Worcester, we weren't able to connect as often, so we weren't putting out videos, and the YouTube algorithm is ruthless, like, it's like, you didn't upload for two days, we're, taking, we're not suggesting videos, we're not doing anything, so... Yep. We were getting back together and we were making, I thought, some really quality sketches. Like, production value was a lot better and we'd get like 30 views. And it's just like, wow, that sucks. So we're like, <laughs> we kind of studied the algorithm a little bit more. We found that streaming and daily content is something that it favors him still being in New York. We were like, we can't do a comedy video every day. That's just like impossible. So we kind of looked at what our other interests were and i was doing a show with my friend maggie she goes by starry cosmic on youtube on her channel where we it was called those fake gamers and we were kind of talking about video games and it was doing decently well and we were like hey let's work together let's come up with a new channel so we got a few of our other friends involved we focus on gaming and pop culture news in general and do live streams and as far as wicked good everything goes we had um last of the good ones is the sketch 
group uh and that name was like somehow we like came up with it super easily and then wicked good everything was a struggle man like yeah. two <laughs> weeks of just like eight of us pitching ideas and we wanted it to be oh, something the name yeah that, yeah it was like we wanted it to be something that was massachusetts you know people would look at it like okay i know this from massachusetts wicked and so we're like we're so we like played around we're like really great videos you know wicked good videos and i was like well we're not just doing comedy we're not just doing video games we're trying to do everything so uh we were like yeah wicked good everything and then everyone was like yeah fine whatever i'm tired we'll just go with wicked good everything <laughs> <laughs> so that is where the name came from that's kind of where the channel came from and it's been i think like a month and a half where almost daily content and it's a lot of oh, work shit. it's a lot of fun dude daily content that is Kudos to you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, I, ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. But yeah, that's, oh shit, I should go. Oh, no. <laughs> I should look at the clock. Yeah, I should look at the clock. All right. Well, Brian, it was awesome talking to you, man. Thanks yeah, so much. It was great meeting this. you, and yeah, I'll send yeah. any voice actors your way if I find yeah, out. Yeah, sure. We're always, we're always looking for people, man. All right. All right, Turgeon, I'm assuming we're talking tonight, right, Turgeon? Yeah, we'll catch up. All right, cool. All right. Later. Needle gentlemen. Thanks, Jaime. Excellent. All right. So I find that really fascinating because so when I first heard of Wicked Good Everything, I immediately found like, is it a review blog of like Worcester? Because that's pretty cool if it is. And then starting to explore a little bit more, I'm like, okay, so it's a little more like it's actually within in line with what we're doing. So I right. really found that fascinating. Is this so? Is this a passion project, or is this something that you're like, yeah, I'm going off the boat, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make this happen? I think for me, um, just making content in general is something I'm passionate about. And like, I was at my nine to five and I was feeling really uncreative, really unproductive. Like I'd still be writing stuff, but not actually producing anything was just a huge bummer. And like I said, the fact that we'd like put all this effort into these sketches and they'd get like a quarter of the views that they, not that we were like, killing it back in the day but we were getting a decent amount of views back in the day um it was like man this is really disheartening and we had started live streaming on twitch uh just to and i as last of the good ones when he still lived in rutland and i still lived in rutland and then we like both went our separate ways me to boston him to new york and we're like well we can't really do that anymore um but we still really enjoyed streaming so i think as far as it's just, I just want to like make cool stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that was our drive. And I think mm. it's, I think again, you're not in it for money. No, De definitely you're not. It, you're in it to put the content out and to get eyes on it, which I mm. think is, again, that's, it kind of leads to my next question, which I'm curious about. It's like, what does success mean to you in this regard? Because, you know, there are so many people that go into it where it's like, oh, I want to make, I want to, you know, this, I want to be my full time job. Mm -hmm. I want to make shit tons of money. Like, it's just, but different people. I think for success so far for me would be just continuing to meet the deadlines we're setting for ourselves and just be happy with the effort we're putting in and to meet like cool people. Like I don't, we, we went to the same school. We never crossed paths. Like we would have never yep. met had it not been for this stuff. So I really like that. And I think just success is just to build like a fun community, meet new people and, you know, uh, make cool stuff. Like I said, excellent. is there, is there a piece of content that you guys are particularly proud of that you would, you know, wish had some more eyes? Um, so I think the daily, um, news shows we put the, they're only like two to four minutes long, but Tamor mm -hmm. puts in so much work editing those. And then I put in like, I write all of them and then I film them. So like, I think for what they are, for how quick we turn them around, I'd love for more people to watch those. But the thing is, it's like people aren't interested in every pop culture news story that comes out. Like we had a story this week about um, Edgar Wright accidentally 
being in the reflection of a scene in Baby Driver and like them kind of having to CGI out like in the monitor and make it a phone. Like Tamor and I are big Edgar Wright fans, so we're like, oh, this is cool. Like this is a fun story, and it got like not that many views. And then we did a a story on cheating in retro video game records, and both of those yeah we have two. Those get tons of views. I was like, wow, there's like a niche like community <laughs> as far as those. Um, as far as something that hasn't gotten a ton of views so we kind of have like wicked good everything last of the good ones and starry cosmic is like all part of the same group now so um last of the good ones we have a series called things we may have tried which like i had watched food review channels and i found them like really dry and i don't want to say dumb because i don't want to like disparage other people but i was like there needs to be something to make these like more exciting so um we started off as like let's try to make an interesting food review and then of course it just like spiraled out of control and now it's like 10 episodes in and it's like a really weird surreal um like web series about food but then about like other stuff and maybe it's connected to the fallout universe i don't know <laughs> to see <laughs> i uh i'm pulling it up right now i think i found my rabbit hole for the afternoon so I'll be- <laughs> enjoy those they get really weird the last one that came out super weird. So do our discussions. It's all right. <laughs> um, moving forward, I mm. guess, because I've heard a, a good bit of you go down all different types of alleys for mm. this content. Where do you, I mean, where do you want to end up? I guess this is a two part question. One, like what's the next kind of area of content that you would really like to continue exploring? If it's one that you already have started, where do you want it to be? Uh, I want to. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, I, sorry. I want to start really getting back into scripted content, um, especially where there are more people involved now, and some people are more interested in acting. Because that's the hardest part is getting people to be like, "Hey, want to come act? It's going to be like a ten hour day. You're not going to make money. We might buy you food if we have money. Uh, it's mostly just for fun, and probably ten people on the internet will see it. And people are like, "Yeah, that doesn't sound super interesting to me." So, but uh, I think now, you know, as we meet more people who are interested in stuff, do collaborations, and then the people that we've brought on to we get everything are more interested in acting and whatnot. I'd really like to get back into sketches and doing kind of scripted series excellent i know uh i mean you speak to one thing i think is really i think it's really crucial especially Mm. for i'd say like honestly the the landscape that we're dealing with and i think it is collaboration where it's Mm. like again we've talked about having this connections and bringing on different people to add different value but it's i think it speaks to this idea of like Again, that's how we found a couple of our of our current supporters is, yeah, we might not have, you know, the current traffic to be justifying for, you know, like a monetary value. Mm-hmm. But I think it's be this idea of like, hey, people want to help one another out. Yeah. And I think collaborators are going to be the way to, to kind of get the smaller, I'll, I'll call them startup the um, content producer. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that's like the one thing that, people on our level have over big content creators where there's no like expectations of like oh yeah i'll do your thing if you pay me money it's more just like yeah i'll do your thing i, I love your content I- like i'd love to do whatever i can to help and i think the more people who have that attitude like the faster we'll all like rise each other up like a rising tide raids all boats type situation yeah it's support versus competition in that yeah. regard and i found that to be very helpful mm-hmm. um like you're definitely knows you're trying to help one another out more than anything. Yep. I think I've heard it before um on podcasts discussed. There's like this idea of there's a finite like success out there and it's like people get competitive because they're like, oh if that person succeeds, it takes away my opportunity to exceed. But I feel like today that's not true at all. Like people have so much time to watch and like even if they're at a desk listening to podcasts or whatever, like there's not a finite amount of opportunity. Like there's no scarcity in terms of success. Like helping someone out is gonna help you out and it's not like competitive, you know? Yeah. So I think I got one other, I have one other kind of final wrap up question mm-hmm. and then I'm about to explore all of this. And I'm, <laughs> I, we were 
following up after. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or you're just I, like, man, I do not want to talk to Brian anymore. <laughs> he makes weird no. videos. I'm going to find out just how weird. And trust me, if you find my YouTube channel, you'll be going down your own. Okay. Like, watch you sit. Like, project videos. It's something yeah. weird. But, hey, that's you. Um, I know one thing that I'm I'm particularly interested in is, you know, a lot of people, like, we've ended up here where mm -hmm. we're both producing content. Yeah. I guess in terms of both your process, but one thing that if, you know, if someone's listening here that's, like, thinking about starting a podcast, mm -hmm. any type of creation on YouTube, really anything, what was, like, what's one tip that you would provide that you think 90% of other people wouldn't provide? Um, all right. So I have like kind of like one tip, but in two parts. First, you don't need to go out there and spend a ton of money on equipment. <laughs> you can use your phone as a microphone. Like your cell phone is good enough if you're just starting out as a camera and a microphone. And two, if, even if you don't have the best equipment, nobody can take away your work ethic and your like willingness to meet deadlines, to go the extra mile, to stay up late, to do something. You're not seeing monetary gain from it, but you're seeing you know your own passions come to life. And that's really what I want to get across, is you can outwork anybody as long as you put your mind to it. Does that make sense? <laughs> I mean, no, coming from, coming from video production prior, mm -hmm. I was interning at Scope, and I've learned like, the value of just like what equipment you have access to in mm. the palm of your hand. Um, and it's small things that can produce pretty good content. Like I know the first thing that it's one of those in Jaime are listening to one of the rough drafts of our first podcast. I'm like, a lot of background noise and it's a quick sock over your mic. And he's like, yeah. what? I'm like, it, and so it's small things like that, where it's mm. like, you're you bumped up the production value of that, like tenfold just yeah. by canceling the background thrown a sock over a mic it didn't require a 200 like upgrade yep no that's that's perfect that's exactly what i'm saying like i feel like a lot of people are intimidated by like oh man it's gonna cost so much money oh i don't have you know a canon 70d or whatever like i don't i can't make this it's like honestly today people are putting out feature films that are going in film festivals filmed on iphones granted they have a bunch of like attachments and stuff but it was filmed on an iPhone. So like you can really just use what you have around you and don't feel like, oh, I can't be competitive with other YouTubers. I can't get people interested if I don't have the newest and flashiest items. I guess so the, the point that I, I'm kind of hearing is you're not going to be limited by the hardware or the software. You're yeah. only limited by kind of scope of your own thoughts. Exactly. And... I think that's like something that people are afraid of is like, oh man, if I don't make it look perfect, if I don't have it perfectly color, you know, uh, graded, if I don't have the audio perfect, no one's going to watch it. And like, really, like, there are a lot of people out there who don't have everything perfect, but it's their personality, it's their hard work that's showing through, and that's what people connect to more than the equipment. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So one other thing that I'm particularly interested in exploring is we'd love to host you on our discussion coming up um, in a couple of weeks. It's it's you know it's our follow up to the Halo episode. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we get a handful of community feedback, but I think that would be a great opportunity to yeah, kind of host really spotlight you as like, look, we're gonna we're gonna drive the interview to you. Hey, any anything you need from me, you got it. You need voice acting, anything, I'll, I'll help you out. So just let me know, and I will I will be there. Excellent. For our own sake, because I need to hear it, where can we find you guys? I know you mentioned a two or three channels. Brand. Yeah, yeah. Again, so. I'm going to take the deep dive right after this. I need to know where I'm going. All right. So as far as Wicked Get Everything, uh, if you search Wicked Get Everything on YouTube, you'll find it. We only have 50 subscribers so far, so we can't get that custom URL. Um, as for... Last of the Good Ones, youtube.com slash Last of the Good Ones, Starry Cosmic, youtube.com slash Starry Cosmic. Uh, Cosmic is with a K on both sides, so the K at the beginning and the end. And then we're on Facebook, Wicked Get Everything, Twitter, WG, everything, and 
this podcast is iTunes and just search Brian and Dylan take on the world. Uh, it's like an offshoot of everything. I feel like a shark, you know, if I'm not working on something at every moment, I'll die, you know? <laughs> I hear you, man. I, I guess like, that's one thing that I'm particularly interested in is we, we really start, we built, you know, level floor off of like mm-hmm. essentially, um, an agile model or methodology, yeah. I guess. Do you guys, are you just going after it or, or what? Cause that's, that's my challenge is in other, like, I'd say prior like creative ventures in, mm-hmm. including our own startup that I worked on at Clark with like it's I mean to have a plan is different than to have like a process and a mm-hmm. methodology and I think that's really really useful in terms of again a more when you're taking a creative approach mm-hmm. so uh, so we have like monthly we try to do it every two weeks but it's really been like monthly uh, group calls where we're like alright guys this month here's what we're trying to do Here's the dates that we have to do everything. Each week we have like Monday, I'll write all the news stuff for that week. Jenny and I will film it. Maggie will film her news story. We'll hand it off to the two editors. They'll have it out for Wednesday and Friday. Tuesday, Thursday, we stream. Uh, Monday, this podcast comes out. And then weekends, we were having long form episodes. Uh, We changed those fake gamers to those fake nerds. But the weekends are like a doldrum. <laughs> like people like don't give a shit what you put out on the weekends we found. So <laughs> <laughs> like so we're trying to rework that and probably just do streaming and other like random videos on the weekend. But we kind of I think uh, and definitely something I'd love to like discuss with you further is how to get a better like organization because a lot of times it's like, Alright guys, this is really clear to me. I feel like I've put it out clearly is it clear to everyone else? Because you can get wrapped up in your own head where you're like, I know what's going on. I feel like I told them. Do they know what's going on, though? You know. Mm. And so I, mean, I, I need to get better organized, for sure. Hey, it's a framework, so whether or not you, you know, it's not a cure-all, but it's a mm. tool to be able to help that as long as everyone else is using. And, again, it gets everyone on, on the same page. And I yeah. think it's – I mean, as, as our team – I grown over the last few episodes at this point I think we're almost at like we're at five or six people now mm. um I start to think like okay um we're gonna need to have this as a foundation when people start to like add on because it's mm. like what's it look like it's like oh we have that we have a process yeah. we have it nailed down and everyone's kind of following it to the point where it's that group mentality where I think if like if everyone thinks that you know the the grass is blue well guess what the grass blue and that's we follow it because we everyone else is thinking that right yeah I, um that's yeah, yeah and but. that's definitely something i'll definitely uh talk to you more about off this because i like i said i i need to get like better organization for the group as a whole you know how it is sometimes it feels like you're herding cats but you have like eight people eight different ideas it's like you want to be inclusive of every day idea but the way like youtube is you have to like meet certain upload schedules to keep people interested so it's like you know like i hear that and i want to move forward and do that idea but we need to focus on this thing right now so that people are here to see that idea later down the line yeah big benefit of what we've been using in agile is prioritization of Mm. of the the content that's going to produce the highest value in this very so hey i mean we've we're happy to share with you you just frame it with the way with your content and how you guys want to approach it um but it's there it's useful and brian i really appreciate your time i know as i've already mentioned we want to host you on the discussion um coming up about two weeks now and i think that would be a great opportunity to at least if not if we can get tim Blow from mass digion it would mm. connect you there sounds awesome and thank you so much for coming on this has been a lot of fun i love picking people's brains about their creative projects uh this is a real treat for me for sure first time not gonna be the last time i can already tell uh, absolutely all right have a good one man Roger. thanks brian appreciate it